Well, hello. Got a few more libertarian videos coming your way as I read through some articles, look at some things, and from the people who've commented, talked about my videos, some friends and stuff, I appreciate your comments. They've been very kind. Uh, but some recommendations have been made as far as improved production quality and sound quality. So in an effort to try to give the people what they want, I've got this this little microphone. I don't know if it makes a difference. At this point, I'm just leaning on the content, so hopefully that will make a difference. If you want to send something my way, uh, camera, or you have recommendations for what type of camera or something, uh, feel free. Um, I deal with all comments, recommendations the, the same way. Oh, I'm throwing wind trash. So anyway. So today I wanted to look at an article by Ron Paul, and it has to do with what's going on in Syria. Now, Syria is a very complicated situation, so it, it needs probably more than, than one video for sure to deal with it. You'll probably remember that after there was the recent attack on civilians with chemical weapons, which, you know, was almost automatically blamed on Assad, there was, you know, a pretty universal from left and right uproar about it, which, you know, there should be, and, and that's justified, but also the idea that the U.S. needs to automatically jump into this situation and follow a policy of regime change because Assad is Hitler. On Tuesday, Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad launched a horrible chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians. Using a deadly nerve agent, Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women, and children. Even beautiful babies were cruelly murdered in this very barbaric attack. Tonight, I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons, violated its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention, and ignored the urging of the UN Security Council. And the region continues to destabilize, threatening the United States and its allies. Yesterday, chemical attack, a chemical attack that was so horrific in Syria against innocent people, including women, small children, and even beautiful little babies. Their deaths was an affront to humanity. These heinous actions by the Assad regime cannot be tolerated. Oh, we've seen this movie before. It was when uh, Barack Obama said that uh, they would have a red line, they crossed it, and he did nothing. And uh, Bashar Assad and his friends, uh, his, his friends, the Russians, uh, pay, take note of what Americans say. I'm sure they took note of what our Secretary of State said just the other day, that the Syrian people uh, would be determining their own future themselves. That one of the more incredible statements I've ever heard, given the involvement of Hezbollah, of the Iranians, of the Russians, and of course the barrel bombing and precision strikes by Russian aircraft into hospitals in Aleppo. So uh, I'm sure they're encouraged to uh, know that the United States is withdrawing and seeking some kind of uh, new arrangement uh, with the Russians, and it is another disgraceful chapter in American history, so, and it was predictable. So, Senator, what do you want to see President Trump do? 
I want to say, I want him to hear him say, we're going to arm the Free Syrian Army. We are going to uh, dedicate ourselves to the removal of Bashar Assad. We're going to have the Russians pay a price for their engagement. The Iranians and Hezbollah are also heavily involved. All players here are going to have to pay a penalty, and the United States of America is going to be on the side of people who fight for freedom, and, uh, and we will not sit by and watch chemical weapons being used to slaughter innocent women and children. You might remember when the pictures were smuggled out before by a wonderful man named Cesar of those who were victims of chemical attacks. Didn't we learn a lesson when Barack Obama refused to do anything? Senator, that is completely different than what the administration is saying. I mean, you just uh, paraphrased what Secretary of State Tillerson said about the long-term status of President Assad will be decided by the Syrian people. And then U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley went further, some say. She said, quote, our priority is no longer to sit and focus on getting Assad out. Well, I, the United States of America is known to help people who want to freedom and democracy. No, none of us are arguing for American troops uh, on the ground uh, there to fight against Bashar Assad, but we certainly believe that we can fight ISIS and we can help people who are struggling against this incredibly, one of the great brutal dictators in history, Bashar Assad and his minions. There was a front page story in the Washington Post yesterday about the torture of thousands and thousands and murder of thousands and thousands in Damascus. I mean, this, these are war crimes on the scale that almost unmatched since Nazi Germany. That everything, everything we don't like is, is Hitler. And Assad, he may be comparable to Hitler in many ways. Right now, I'm not talking about the facts of whether or not he used chemical weapons. He very may well have. He is a dictator. He is definitely not a leader of freedom and democracy in his country. I want us to look at what the justifications were for the U.S. getting involved, because militarily, and the U.S. getting involved, the justification was that Assad is killing his own people, that that the Syrians are killing their own people, that there are civilians being killed, that this is barbaric, that this is something that needs to be stopped by the U.S. or whoever is powerful enough to stop it. And the United States of America is going to be on the side of people who fight for freedom. We will not sit by and watch chemical weapons being used to slaughter innocent women and children. On innocent civilians, Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women, and children. Even beautiful babies. And so... The, the narrative taken from that, the understanding that we might get from that, which is true, is that killing civilians is bad. Okay, I think that goes without saying. Ironically, though, it's not always bad from a certain point of view, according to this, this narrative. And I'm not saying I agree with it. I totally disagree with it. It, it comes down to the fact that now U.S. airstrikes in Syria whether individually or, or leading the coalition that are trying to fight Assad's forces, that are trying to fight ISIS, that are trying to fight a lot of things, they have now killed more civilians than Assad is accused of killing. The UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that at least 225 civilians, including 44 children and 36 women, had been killed in the month between 23 April and 23 May. Women and children, even beautiful babies. To slaughter innocent women and children. But Assad is, he's Hitler-like. But when the U.S. kills the same amount of civilians or more through airstrikes, why are we still arguing for, for that type of intervention? What is the justification then? Because the justification of not killing civilians Kill, there should be less civilians killed. There should be no civilians killed. And the U.S.'s intervention increases civilian deaths. It, it has increased civilian deaths. So, so what is the game plan? What is the justification? Are they deaths offered on the altar of, okay, this is, this is necessary for the greater good of regime change? I agree with the first point. Killing of civilians is barbaric 
and murderous and wrong. There's my cat, so he, he agrees. Let's look at this Ron Paul article, and this link will be in the description. It's called, Are We Fighting Terrorism or Creating More Terrorism? Now, I know radical Islamic terrorism and that ideology is a radical ideology that perpetuates terrorism. I'm not debating that at all. But I think it plays into the hands of the terrorists to say that the U.S. is evil, that the U.S. will in intervene in the country to get what they want, that they'll do whatever they have to do in their country that's against the interests, and that the only way to fight them is by uniting together in some sort of radicalized movement. I think it plays into the hands of that narrative when people see the U.S. killing more civilians than Assad and then saying, well, we're entering the war to because of the killing of civilians by Assad. Okay. Ron Paul, I'm not going to read the whole article. He talks about Manchester and the different things going on there with the recent suicide bombing and terrorist attack. But he says, and, you know, lots of discussion is being talked about where those civilians are killed by that, that type of savagery and it did ter terrorize the population. But he goes on to say, what is less considered are attacks that leave far more civilians dead. So, I mean, if dead civilians are, you know, the killing of civilians by terror is what we are against, then we should be considering this. What is le far less considered are attacks that leave far more civilians dead, happen nearly daily instead of rarely, and produce a near constant feeling of terror and dread. These are the civilians on the receiving end of U.S. and Allied bombs in places like Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Somalia, and elsewhere. Last week alone, U.S. and coalition attacks on Syria left more than 200 civilians dead and many hundreds injured. In fact, even though U.S intervention in Syria was supposed to protect the population from government attacks, U.S.-led airstrikes have killed more civilians over the past month than airstrikes of the Assad government. So let's stop and think about that for a minute. The justification for jumping into Syria with the military was that Assad was Hitler-like and killing his own people, and we ought to intervene. But that viewpoint needs to be confronted with the facts that if that's your justification, then the U.S. killing more civilians than Assad with his airstrikes basically means that uh, entering the Syrian situation with military force does positive harm, killing people by trying to help. Politics and military always have to fall be judged by their consequences. They can't be judged by, well, the people had very good intentions. Well, it doesn't matter if it's leaving more people dead. Ron Paul says that is like a doctor killing his patient to save him. As if a doctor said that he was going to try some new type of invasive method because so many patients were dying, and that doctor ends up killing more patients by trying his new method I mean, what do we call that? Well, he had good intentions. Should we only care about civilian deaths when they are in the United States or in Europe or perpetuated by someone who has a religious or ideological motive that's abhorrent to us? Or people who have a good motive and end up killing more people? It's like how people you know, dislike fascism automatically, which they should. It's a terrible system. It's against freedom. It's against liberty. It's against rights. It's against all sorts of ethic. But then therefore communism, which killed far more people because it has a nice, it has a nice sounding idea. It, sounds equal, it talks about equality. It talks about egalitarianism. It talks about sharing. It talks about all these. Communism killed 20 million people. Fascism killed... Six plus million? They're both horrible ideologies, but one sounds nice and one doesn't. And so this is the policy to quote unquote fight terrorism. And it's not working. And Ron Paul brings up the point. This is something we call collateral damage. And our justification is, oh, well, war is hell. 
or this is just collateral damage. This is just the damage that, that happens when you get involved. How long until we accept that collateral damage is just another word for murder? And we ought to think seriously about that. That whatever type of intervention or policy that we follow has to be considered very carefully and the consequences have to be weighed and we also have to think about the unintended consequences. Ron Paul goes on even more to talk about the Manchester bomber and says, the British government actually granted permission for its citizens of Libyan background to travel to Libya and fight alongside Al-Qaeda to overthrow Gaddafi. So the British were encouraging citizens of from Libya to go back to Libya to be involved there in trying to overthrow another head of state who was another dictator, another terrible person in Libya, which is a whole nother situation. And so they go over there, the Manchester bomber goes over there, participates in that with people who are terrorists, people who are, if not Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda and ISIS-like, and then comes back and is radicalized after being converted by these ideologies and then brings terrorism back with him. And the real problem is that both Washington and London are more interested in regime change overseas than any blowback that might come to the rest of us back home. They just do not care about the price we pay for their foreign policy actions. No grand announcement of new resolve to fight terrorism can be successful unless we really understand what causes terrorism. They do not hate us because we are rich and free. They hate us because we are over there bombing them. The bombing other nations and killing their civilians, even if we say it's for a good reason, can cause what's called blowback, unintended consequences that affect our citizens here at home and affect their safety. If our justification for going into Syria is that civilian deaths were being caused, therefore we must intervene. That goes away by the fact that our intervening has caused more civilian deaths. And in doing that, in doing that we are trying to fight terrorism. And in fighting terrorism, we give them some type of justification for bringing terrorism back home to the rest of us. So not only does it not help civilians, and it does not fight terrorism. 